Okay. Hi, everybody. from the chamber. I'm here in my home, um, as I think most of you are, uh, getting ready to share with you some more great news about another chamber member who's doing really good things for our community. Today, we're lucky to be with John Pascarella, head coach of Energy FC. Um, as you can see, I am also a fan, so this is a great opportunity uh, for me to get to ask him some questions. Welcome, coach. Thank you. Great to be on. It's great to be with everyone, and it's especially great to to be speaking with you, someone who's a fan of the team. <laughs> yes. Well, I understand that your family is a fan of being here in Oklahoma City. Y'all are relatively new to the city. How are y'all doing here um, during this really unusual time? We are uh, we are well, but we are we are still separated. Actually, with the timing of preseason, uh, the timing of when I took the job. Uh, which was in, in December, essentially, um, the start of preseason being January 15th, and then school getting out in June. Um, we were going to leave my youngest daughter in high school in Minneapolis until June and have the family move when the school year. Obviously, with COVID and everything else that's going on, it is not the easiest time right now to move. Uh, yes. It's not the easiest time to put a home up for sale. Uh, yes. Yeah, so all that's been very interesting. So they're there. I'm here. It's been a lot of Zoom meetings and a lot of Skyping and WhatsApp and dinners together that way. Um, but we're coping. Uh, we're coping like everybody else who's either doing it, you know, uh, close by with people or, or over long distances. How tough, though. Um, I'm glad that you got to get here and get settled, but I'm sorry that y'all are separated. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um, in some ways, it's beneficial for the job because it allows me to dig in. And we have found this usually when I leave for a new job like I did in, in Minneapolis or a new job like I did in Kansas City. If I go in December or January when the season's about to start or preseason's about to start and they follow at the end of the school year, it gives me five, six, seven months to sink my teeth into the job and get comfortable with it so that when they arrive, I can actually spend some quality time with them. Yeah. Getting acclimated to the new environment in the city. So that's what we plan on doing here at OKC at some point in time. But, but obviously the, the COVID things had us, uh, had us delayed a little bit. So we'll make well, it work. I understand before we all got uh, sheltered in place that you did get a chance to get out and enjoy some of our food in our city yeah. and that you were a fan um, of our dining scene. Tell us about what kind of curbside pickup, delivery, um, what's on your list of favorites right now? Yeah, I, I always have loved the food. As often as I've visited OKC, I've loved the food. And I've hit a lot of places since I've been here. Um, and even during the, the crisis, I've been able to go get some takeout and curbside stuff. So um, we still frequent Empire uh, Slice House. Which I think yes. is very, it's a very, it, it reminds me of home a little bit. I grew up in New Jersey, so that kind of New York style pizza um, sits well with me. Big Taco Trucks is a place that, that not only um, helps the team out, but is a place that we've been to. Um, that's been fantastic. Uh, there's a Chinese place that's right up the road from Taft. It's probably close by to you called Chow's. Chow's. <laughs> uh, little mom and pop place uh, that I popped into one day uh, and, uh, and really liked and have been there a few times during this, uh, this period. And so there's, there's been a few of them. You know, there's been quite a few of them actually. And we'll probably go once or twice, uh, my assistant coaches and I, and, and go grab something out and, and bring it back to the apartment or or sit by the car and, and sit together and eat and try to, to build some camaraderie, but also enjoy some good local food as well. That's great. Well, that's kind of my next question is what is going on right now with Energy FC? I've been seeing some great content um, on your social media. What are you doing to stay out there? The guys have done a phenomenal job staying relevant um, and helping with the branding of, of the game uh, in general and of the energy uh, in particular of the league as well. Um, but we've done a lot of things in, in and around OKC. We have to shelter in place. We're not going anywhere. Leagues asked us not to move out of market. The team is committed to the city. Uh, so we've gotten involved with different programs like Meals on Wheels. Um, we've been involved with uh, OKC public schools and packing boxes of food. Jason and I were out one day in a line where everybody was separated by about 20, 30 feet and packing boxes. Some had masks on, some didn't, but it was it was really cool work that needed to be done. And it's obviously slowed down in this time, but they needed volunteers. And, you know, we've had some players, uh, Arun Basulovic, I know, did some, some stuff with City Center um, in delivering kind bars. 
Um, we've presented uh, the people at St. Anthony's Hospital with a delivery from Papa John's because they're on the front lines working every day. So we wanted to make sure, that, and I'm sure that there's other people that are doing it as well, but Papa John's is one of our sponsors. So we worked with them to deliver some pizzas uh, to people that were working or in between shifts that couldn't leave the hospital and had to sleep there and, and grab something decent to eat. And so there's a lot of those things that have been, been going on. Organizationally, we've donated, I believe everything that's involved with our merchandising has been donated to, is it United Way, I think? And I'll double check to make sure. It is the United Way Fund. Um, everything that we've generated in April, and I don't know if that goes from May, I would have guessed it might extend into May as well. Um, hopefully I'm not speaking out of turn, but all of our merchandising revenue um, we're donating uh, to the United Way. So the, the organization, the players, the coaching staff, everyone in the front office has been involved because we're all here. We're rooted in the community and we're trying to do everything we can um, players included, uh, to make things, make things better for where we are. We, if we wanted to go online now and purchase Energy FC merchandise, we can do that online and then those funds will go yes. to United Way. Yeah. That's it's right. About the, only, it's about the only way you could do it because you're not going to show up at the office right now and buy them. No, that's true. Although I have purchased from in your office uh, yes. before too. My husband's getting a lot of use out of some sweatpants I bought in there for him um, yeah, for the holidays. <laughs> yeah. It's actually pretty fun to go in and purchase in there because the environment's good. The coaching staff's around. The front office people are there. Our, our, our fans seem to find it enjoyable to come in there because you never know who you bump into and who you're talking to. And Jeff Kretschmar helped me pick out which sweatpants to get. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So we also recognize the anniversary um, of the Oklahoma City bombing this month, and I know that you all have done some particular things around that, too. Talk to me yeah. about that. Yeah, um, both on a, it's interesting you asked the question because both on a personal level and then on an organizational or a, or a professional level, we were lucky. I think um, we were fortunate in the timing. We, a little bit of it was, was kind of seeing into the future. Part of it was a timing issue with some other things that were unrelated, but we were able to wear our commemorative kits, which were in the colors actually of the, of the shirt I'm wearing now, was in the black and in the silver. Um, on the back had the, had the survivor tree on it to, to honor the memory of the, of the bombing and we were able to wear that in our first home game. We had a match scheduled for this past weekend. It would have been a commemorative match that obviously has had to be abandoned because of everything that's gone on. But we will do that and we will honor the moment um, when the, the time is appropriate with our season again. But the way we did it with the jerseys and the, the interesting way that they all came out at the very beginning of the season for our home opener uh, was a fantastic way to commemorate it. On a personal level, um, I went down and visited the site for the first time uh, this weekend. And although the museum's closed, the actual grounds, I've never walked before. I've never had a chance to kind of walk that area and, and to look around and, and, and kind of feel it and absorb it and, and, and be somber in the moment and kind of take it all in and, and kind of say a quiet prayer, you know, um, as you find yourself doing kind of in those moments when you visit those types of sites. So um, it was interesting, it was moving, but, but the question that you ask is an interesting one for me because on both the personal and the professional level, it's, it's hit home locally um, and not something that I've given a ton of thought to before I moved to the mm -hmm. Oakland area, but something that, that obviously is part of our history and our, our heritage. Speaking of which, I'll ask you a question about yes. our history and heritage. Someone recommended the book Boomtown, I think, yes. about OKC. Good read, good book, fair description or not? Good read, good book. Good read, good book. Okay. <laughs> Maybe not a fair. Okay, well, good. I want, to, I, I want to know where I am. Um, and I've been back and forth so often with our connection, with our club's connection to Sporting Kansas City when energy was in its infancy because I was with SKC. So the connection is there with the city and the town. But I still don't know a lot of the history and tradition. I didn't grow yeah. up at home. I didn't go to school. Um, here, so uh, somebody recommended it, and it's something I wanna I wanna read and, and look into. But back to your question, personally, to to visit that site and to kind of feel that in that way with that type of emotion instead of from it being from a distance was very moving this past weekend. Well, to your point, you got to have one match and wear those special kits, and then y'all were out on the road until. Um, everything kind of shut down. So we haven't had you here back at home. When do you think we'll get to? Um, I honestly think that by maybe the end of May, we'll be training early June, I would think at the latest, and then playing by late June, early July. 
And, and I think those two dates between where we start training again and, and where we go back into playing will probably be separated by a month. Because the reality is the players are going to need another month of acclimation and, and playing in preseason, really. Preseason number two in the year 2020 um, to be able to have a good season and kind of withstand the, the rigors of it. So, Yes. Well, I'm excited to get back over there, um, not just to see you and, the, and you and the team, but also because you got the Will and Wiley Seltzers this season. And I only <laughs> got to have that experience once, so I look forward to having it again. Excellent. Okay, well, as we kind of wrap up here, you know, a, a lot of us are feeling a little bit down. We're not having um, the greatest connection to our community that we love to have, and it's kind of a tough time. As a, as a professional motivator, as somebody who knows how to get a team fired up to win, um, can you give us a little bit of a pep talk, Coach? Yeah, you know, it's funny because this goes on um, maybe not daily but weekly with our players, and it's done like this on Zoom. And, you know, I, I'll say to everybody in the OKC area the same thing we talk about with the teams. You have to call it what, what it is, and, and this moment in time sucks. We are, none of us like it. We're not enjoying it. We're, we're – we're all very vibrant people and we want to be out and about and doing our thing, but you've got to, you've got to deal with it. You've got to do what's right for the community and for yourself and your family, which means shelter in place. Um, but it also means to enjoy yourself. And maybe that means finding new hobbies or new habits or new experiences, going and visiting uh, new memorials like I did this past weekend. Maybe you can't do those things in groups, but you can do those things. You can go out with friends and with partners and start to visit and, and, and do some exercise or create an, or find a new hobby. Um, but don't dwell on the fact that you have to be stuck inside because of coronavirus. Dwell on the opportunities it presents and some of the things that you can take from it and grow from it. And then take that into our, our new bold world once we're all back doing what we normally do. So that's what I have to say to the people of OKC. Let's go. That is an excellent straight talk, pet talk. <laughs> there you go. Okay, well that is, that is, uh, that is a, a native New Jersey guy uh, becoming an Oklahoman. We are, we are straight shooters. I like it. I feel it. Um, and I, I felt your heart for the community and our conversation here today. So thank you so much for making time to talk about this stuff today. Thank you for all that you guys are doing for our community right now. Um, look forward to having you here whenever we can all be together again. Thanks everybody who's been watching our Chamber series about great Oklahoma City businesses uh, doing good things to help OKC right now. Look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you.